Caught between Lyrian Hammer and Skelligan Stone, Nilfgaard was shattered, destroyed. The victors now stood eyeing each other. These islanders were not like those Meave had met before. They wore no armor and carried no shields. At their fore stood a man as stout as an ox and bald as an ancient ghoul. His men called him Arnjolf, the patricide. I thank you for your aid, Arnjolf, said Meave, extending a hand. Eid, she says. Eid. Do you hear that, mates? <laughs> the Skelligers exchanged glances, then erupted in roaring laughter. Not here to help you, not at all. We're after killing. Join me and you shall have your fill. Join you, since? <laughs> Just who the hell are you? Meave, Queen of Rivia and Lyria. Meave, Arnjolf said, his tone sobering. I know the name. Lippy Goodman, call ye bold. Praise your courage to the high heaven. So be it. We'll follow you into fire, wench. Just let us taste of blood. Grant us a death worthy of heroes. Meave couldn't help but smile, then nodded to accept. The Lyrians stepped aside as tattooed warriors joined their ranks. Bigger they are, easier they are to target. Oh, my boots. 
got sand or plenty. Listen to me, old lady. Quick and painful, this'll be. That is what you folk lack. yet again.
Can't wait. Again. Drum and glue, bit of soldier in a ribbit or two, and he's good as new. Off to the front yet again. Entering the swamp's easy. Trouble's getting out. Entering the swamp's easy. Trouble's getting out.
In the distance, Meave spotted a spindle-like shape, which soon proved an enormous, dark obelisk. It stood in the middle of a wetland clearing. Dozens of iron rings dangled from its shaft, clinking and rattling in gusts of wind. Cows, donkeys, and dogs were gathered round the stone, all tied to the rings by ropes. Their hides showed many shallow cuts, seeping blood, festering, drawing mosquitoes in swarms. A number of the animals struggled against their cords, while others, near dead, lay still in the wet, tall grass. Across the clearing, folk emerged from the woods, a handful of peasants with a mule in tow. The beast resisted, stomped and planted its hooves, perhaps sensing its gruesome fate. The queen decided to question the peasants, and soon learned the animals were their sacrifice to the swamp gods. They're all about, dearie, very close. Oh, very, very close. The toothless old woman whispered. They hide neath murky waters, can't feed when they hear the drip drip of blood. The gods look kindly on those what make an offering. All lands have their customs. All lands have their gods, said Meave. It would be rash to offend them. We too must make an offering. The crone was pleased and eager and did nothing to hide it. When the soldiers came forth with an ox, she helped tie its lead to a ring on the stone. She then took a bone knife to the skin over its ribs and sliced. Blood trickled, the water turned red, and then it boiled. The gods accept your offering, my lady, said the old woman, her smile toothless midst a face craggy as bark. And we'd like to thank you for respecting our ways. Come round the village. Grub and drink will be ample, and the tale's right strange, I dare say. Meave took the crone up on her offer. The hamlet proved exceedingly modest, but the villagers prepared a welcome deserving of their guests. At long last, the Lyrians could enjoy a warm meal and dry their ever-wet clothes. The old hag spun her tales the whole night through, of the elves who once lived there, of Iskith's bogs, of dead trees that bore ghastly fruit, and finally, of Gernicora, the swamp's supreme mistress and most highly revered deity. The Lyrians left the village the following morn, their eyes rested, their bellies full.
Your Majesty? Are you well? Yes. <clears throat> yes, but the stench. In Angren, all decomposes, be it dead or very much alive. Rot blights trees, seeping sores torment beasts, and the whole swamp emits the acrid, stifling stench of decay. So when, in the swamp's distant corner, the Lyrians caught whiffs of smoke and roasted meat, they stopped dead in their tracks. The scouts followed their noses to a clearing framed by a palisade. Through the gaps in the posts, they spotted a small fort. Any banners upon it? Whose do you see? Asked the Queen. There aren't none, Your Grace. Not one golden sun, not one silver lily. Meave gave the gate a few solid knocks with her shield. Moments later, a dozen armed men appeared atop the rampart. The one who led them wore a beard. Who are you? Why are you here? I'm Meave. Queen of Lyria and Rivia. At war with Nilfgaard, I ventured into these swamps. <laughs> Is there a war on? <laughs> hey, that's news. Certainly, but little concern to me. The name's Gimpy Gerwin, and I rule these lands. Is that so? As conferred upon you by whom? By me. <laughs> Angren's a good bit larger than folk think. And no dukes or emperor's fingers stand to reach its every corner. Thus, I just up and took this particular nook. Made it mine. So let's parley, Meave. One ruler to another. At the risk of being blunt, I don't care who wins this war. But I want to be in good standing with whoever does. So, I offer you a fire at which to warm your limbs. Also, a place at my table and beds for you to rest. On condition, you pledge to me one very small thing. To respect the sacred laws of hospitality. So be it. I do solemnly swear before the gods and my ancestors that we shall honor all the laws of hospitality. <laughs> Then you're most welcome inside. The fort was simple, built of logs, covered with thatch. Oh, but inside, it was warm, dry. Hot, steaming dishes were piled upon platters, the tables beneath them bent from their weight. Smiles appeared on her soldiers' drained faces, and Meave's spirits were lifted at last. Gerwin proved a cordial host, and eagerly shared both food and tales. He'd led a mercenary band, and they'd stumbled into Angren, discovered a land unclaimed by any feudal lord. He directed the fort, then united the surrounding villages under his very own rule. The folk here are savage, defiant, he said, sipping wine. I keep them on a tight lead for their own good. Elsewise they'd slit your throat first chance they got. Late that night, Meave went to see if her mare had been dressed. In the stable, she happened on a farmhand. Recognizing the queen, the man fell to his knees and averted his eyes. Meave noticed a strange object dangling from a rope around his neck. A human hand, half rotted to the bone. What? What is that? My wife's hand. Your grace, stammered the peasant. Lord Gerwin caught a sneak in some grub. Scraps, really. Took her and told me to wear it, so I'd remember what happens when... Meave left the stable without uttering another word. 
she went straight to the servants' barracks. In the pale glow of her torch, she looked over the peasants, all terrified, all with fresh, bleeding wounds. The queen felt rage rise inside her. The queen blew her horn. Lyrian soldiers filled the yard. They hastily donned their armor, strapped on their swords. Unsure of Meave's intentions, Gerwin's men likewise stood at the ready, weapons in hand. Gerwin! roared Meave. Get out here at once! The stout mercenary stood at his window, glaring from beneath his furrowed brow. I don't know what you think you're doing, he called. But I kindly remind you of your oath and the laws. I've seen your laws. You're strict and they're cruel. So your rule will end now. Attack! I didn't think a queen would so easily break her word. Awaiting your orders. Sod it. Sod it all. I'm coming, I'm coming. To arms! You did the right thing. We should never turn a blind eye to others' suffering. your orders. Don't like this.
cursed traitors. It's gonna be a right good levy, big and beautiful. Remove this pile of manure from my sight. Lame as he was, Gerwin had been a mercenary. He fought hard, he fought well, yet still proved no match for me. She knocked his axe from his hand, he fell to his knees, then she cleaved his head clear off. It rolled like a gourd and came to rest at the peasant's feet. You've your freedom back, growled Meave as she wiped her sword. Yet do not take it for granted. Nilfgaard is in Angren. The black clads will come here too. As long as the golden sun flies over the marsh, you must hide in the woods. Meave's force left the fort before dawn. She rode at the fore, lips pursed, jaw clenched. A stain on her honor. She'd broken her word. Apart from all else, it stung on the inside. We're free. It is the truth. The gods bless you, you man. That Gerwin broke were a monster, my lady. A monster. Worse nor a pack of ghouls. Pack. One month he kept me in darkness. And I only busted. I'll not stay here. It is an evil place. Uh, rather. 